All right, um, before we get into the video, I just wanted to tell you a bit about my week. So this was a big one. Um, we started the week with like an install um, where we took out a multi-head air conditioner and replaced it with a Dakin one. And then just, yeah, just had the service calls, repairs, and a, a couple of installs all in one week. And I'm working tomorrow, um, helping a mate out install a tufted aircon. So yeah, it's just one of those massive ones. Um, but before we get into it, I just wanted to say we've just reached 10,000 subscribers, which is like a big milestone. Um, so thank you to everyone who subscribed and watches the videos. And thank you to the people that are making orders on the website. Um, more and more people are buying stuff and it's, it's helping me, helping the channel, helping everything. So yeah, I just want to say thank you and I hope you enjoy this video. So let's go. Because normally I put her in the morning yeah. and I come down and make breakfast. And when I go upstairs, by the time I'm upstairs, it's like I open the door and it feels really warm. Yeah. But it hasn't been doing that for a while. For a while. Yeah. Since last year. Mm -hmm. Since last year? Mm -hmm. so it did season. work in summer for the cool, didn't it? But not as good. It worked for cool time in summer, yeah. But for winter, or mm -hmm. this winter, it hasn't worked. Even okay. our kids came one day and I heard them say, have you put it on the right all right so it was raining before so i couldn't film anything but basically the complaint is that this old dakin r22 unit runs but it's just not producing hot air anymore so it does run indoor fan runs outdoor fans run at low speed compressor runs the outdoor coil starts to ice up slowly Discharge pipe temp is like 97 degrees Celsius and rising, uh, which is concerning. Um, checked the pressures. It, that's a standing pressure, but um, the, yeah, it's like 150 kPa suction pressure. So this thing's definitely short on gas. Hence why the discharge pipe temp is so high. So I've just had a chat with them. I've explained that this is a very old unit. Just the gas alone, you know, it's like four kilos of R22. What's that like? It'd be close to $500. Just the gas alone is like $500. And I'll never ever push anyone to just replace a unit, you know, but I also need to do my job and tell people the risk of repairing an old unit um anyway they've decided for me to just try and find where the leak is and then we'll make a decision based on that so i'm going to reclaim the r22 out into this bottle i'm going to weigh how much comes out so i know how much gas it had and how much is leaked out and um yeah and then i'm just gonna pressure test the unit so i don't expect it to be easy to find but we'll definitely find it where it's leaking Right, so reclaimed it and that thing had 980 grams in it when it should have 3.7 kilos so it was pretty short and I've just pumped the pressure right up I can't really hear anything but there's heaps of background noise so I'm gonna go jump in the roof and see if I can hear anything or see anything but there's no obvious signs of a leak here. Everything looks good. All right, so I've just taken the top off the indoor unit. There's no obvious signs of a leak. 
there is a bit of mold in the drip tray which happens if there's not enough fall but um no signs of a leak whilst it's open i will spray some coil cleaner in it but what i'm going to do is just go down have another look at the outdoor unit flares look good um, so I'm, I'm just going to close the service valves on the outdoor unit and leave it a couple of days, come back and see if it's the outdoor unit or the indoor unit that's got a leak, but nothing obvious at this point. Alright, so I have um, pressure tested it, 3500 kPa, I've closed them to in, and I'll leave it a couple of days, come back and see it's the condensing unit or the pipes in the indoor unit that's dropped first or dropped more so it's, yeah I can't see anything obvious but it's definitely short on gas so it's leaking somewhere Alright, so it's been a couple of days, um, I've just come back, I'm going to open it up, put my gauges on and see what the pressures are doing, see if it's leaked, or should I say, let's see where it has leaked. Alright, so um, I can't remember if it was Thursday, Friday, or whenever it was, um, but it's now Wednesday so you know it's been a few days um I pressure tested this at I think it was Friday but yeah I pressure tested it at 3600 kPa and I've pressure tested the outdoor unit by itself and the indoor unit and pipe work as one section so I've split the system into two sections um so I pressure tested it at 3,600 kPa. The pipe work and the indoor unit is currently at 3,650 kPa. It's actually gone up in pressure a bit because I was here first thing in the morning on Friday and it was quite cold. Um, the outdoor unit is at 3,290 kPa. So the outdoor unit is leaking somewhere slowly so I'm gonna take the panels off and start looking for oil all right so I've just taken this apart and I was just looking everywhere and honestly there's no signs of any oil anywhere and just as I was about to like start looking at Schroeder's and stuff which aren't leaking I came up here and I'm like, I'm going to check these little service ports down there and there. And then that started to look oily. I'm like, wait a second. And then there's literally oil. So this, it's got a leak. Oh, I can literally see it with my own eyes. This thing has definitely been repaired before. It's got all silver solder on it. And I feel like where it's leaking is where it didn't bind very well. So I've just cleaned up the copper and I've put a lot of flux on it. Try my best. Now 
All right, so it's gonna pump it back up. It's a way better solder join. It, I don't know, before it just looked like a bit lumpy. So I cleaned it up, flux, and um, So I'm trying to get this done because um, I'm running out of light here. I did a, a multi install today and I just came here on the way home. So I got here at three. So I'm trying to get this done before it gets dark. That's what we like to see. Beautiful. So I am um, changing the Schroders and putting new caps on as they are like 20 years old so while there's no gas in it changing the Schroders and caps so I already used my 12 amp hour battery today on the install so I'm going to give it a 6 a go So that's running now. I'll go inside. So I'll pack this up before it gets dark. I'll go inside and um, check it out. But basically, I said to them, like, this is an old unit. You're taking a risk by repairing it. But um, I would never pressure anybody to, to repair something. Sorry, to replace like the whole system. But just to be clear, what I said to the customer is, um, it's hard for me to give advice on if this is repairable until I find where it's leaking. Um, when I found where it was leaking, I then said, look, I can definitely fix this, but in a week's time, these fan, might, fan motors might fail, or in a week's time, the compressor might fail, or the board might fail, like you take that risk. Um, so I never feel comfortable repairing old units. But I also don't feel comfortable um, pressuring people to replace the whole system. So I just let them choose. Like all they want is for you to be honest. So they they took the risk. They like, well, let's just repair it. Um, and just the gas alone, like cost price is like it's like five hundred bucks, something like that. Plus labour, you know, like it's, um, it's risky, but it's also way more expensive to replace the whole unit. So it's just, you know, what do you do? Anyway, let's go inside and test it out. So this thing is running heaps quieter. Heaps quieter. Okay. 
Let's see what it's pumping out. This thing was pumping out 26 degree air the other day, I think, on a day where I was 16 degrees in here. Yeah, it's absolutely popping.